Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the program. Better off or better off? And we'll continue with the question and answer session on marriage. Any other sisters have any question? Assalamu alaikum, brother Zaki. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. My question is why it is said in the hadith that sujood may be allowed to the husband when it is only exclusively for Allah? Sister, the question that sujood may be allowed to the husband even though it's exclusive for Allah. I mean, sister, the hadith you're quoting is wrong. The hadith of the Prophet Muhammad that if sajda would be allowed to anyone besides Allah, then I would have asked you to prostrate to do sajda to your husband. That is the right hadith. What you are saying is totally, it's not permitted. The hadith of Muhammad is that Prophet said that if sajda would have been permitted to anyone besides Allah, then the Prophet said, I would have asked you to do sajda to your husband. Now, this hadith does not mean in any way the Prophet is asking the women or the ladies to equate the husband with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. billah. That is shirk. But it is only telling you what is the importance of your husband. For example, Allah used this type of words even in the Quran. Allah says in the Quran that if Allah has begotten a son, tell them, those people who say that Allah has begotten a son, tell them that if Allah has begotten a son, I would be the first person to bow down to him. That doesn't mean that Allah has a son and you should bow down. The question of Allah having a son does not arise only. So, so there's no question of bowing down. If Allah has a son, I would have been the first person to bow down. Similarly, bowing to anyone besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not exist. And but natural, this is just an analogy, a statement, an idiom to show the importance of the husband. As far as the wife is concerned, he's very important. It doesn't even mean that after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the next person of importance has been known. As a Muslim, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to love the Prophet. And Hadith says that if you do not love Allah and the Messenger of Allah more than your own life, then you cannot be a true moment. So but naturally after loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes the love of the Prophet. But this statement that if sajda was permitted, if prostration was permitted, to when we said Allah, I would have asked you to prostrate your husband, shows the importance of the husband for the wife. That means you have to obey him, you have to love him, you have to respect him, you have to take care of him. As long as he does not go against the commandment of Allah and his Rasul, you have to obey him and follow him. This is just a way of expression, how it is said. And same way, there are hadith on the wife versa, that the best moment is a person who is best to his family, especially the wife. So it's a two-way traffic, it's not a one-way traffic. Hope that answers the question. Yeah. Any other sisters have any question? Brother, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, what should the wife do if the husband commits a major sin, like adultery, drinks alcohol, etc.? If the husband is involved in major sins like adultery, having intoxication, having alcohol, she should be a good muhasana, that's the fortress against the devil, and prevent the husband from continuing with that major sin. So she should be instrumental in trying to stop the husband from continuing the adultery or continuing doing the major sin, like having alcohol. So she should try a level best and first try and find out that why did he get involved in this major sin of drinking alcohol, does he have bad company, you should see to it that you request him to change his company, change his friends, and see to it that he comes out of this evil sin. Similarly, if a person, if the husband is involved in adultery, you try and find out what is the reason that he got involved. Again, can be bad company, can be involvement in certain activities. So it's the duty of the wife to see to it that she becomes his mosena, his fault is against the devil, and try the level best to try and get the husband out of the sin. If the situation continues, so then, depending how well the wife is able to convince the husband, then she has to take a decision that what is it a point of no return? Then she takes the decision that should she continue with the husband who she has tried to get him out of the sin? You know, maybe you have tried for two years, three years, four years, five years. Or you say, okay, fine, that the other aspects of the husband is really very good. He's very good. Everything else is fine. Only this one point only has alcohol. 
everything else is excellent and very good, fine, I don't mind compromising, yet to continue trying to see to it that he comes out of alcohol. So that is the decision that is taken by the wife and how well is she able to convince the husband to come out. But she should never give up and try and continue till the last moment till she convinces him. Hope that answers the questions. Any other sisters have any questions? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please could you explain what is the procedure of divorce? This is as a question that what is the correct procedure for divorce? No divorce is talaq that's prevalent in our society, in our culture, is of different types. There's one procedure that, you know, the husband just says, talaq, 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 and the divorce takes place. This is called as talaq i bidah. It is not proven from Quran and Sahih Hadith. The other type of divorce which is prevalent in the society, in the Muslim society, is that the husband gives divorce, waits for one menstrual cycle, again repeats the divorce, waits for one menstrual cycle, then again give a divorce. This is called a talaq e hasan. That's a good talaq. But the right talaq is talaq e hasan, the best type of talaq, as is described in the Quran and the Sahih Hadith. And there are various verses in the Quran dealing with talaq. Mentioned in Surah Talaq, chapter 65, verse number 2 to 7. It's given in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 228 to 242, the details of talaq. Normally, whenever any disagreement takes place, between the husband and wife, they should initially try and sort it out themselves. You know, suppose, you know, the wife put extra salt in the food and the husband does not like it, he shouldn't say, talak, talak, talak. If he doesn't like extra salt, you should tell the wife, don't put extra salt and the problem is solved. The best is to have a sitting, sort it out, that is the best. If the problem between them cannot be sorted out, then the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 35, that appoint an arbiter from the husband's side and appoint an arbiter from the wife's side. Let there be a family gathering, have an arbiter from the husband's side, an arbiter from the wife's side, sit together and try and explain, you know, always marriage is a delicate issue and there are ups and downs in married life. They should sort it out and try and find a solution. Yet, if all the things have been tried, the husband and wife have got together, they have had a family gathering, they've appointed an arbiter, and yet the matter is not solved, then as a last resort, then divorce can be pronounced. While pronouncing a divorce, it is important that the husband, when he pronounces the divorce, says talaq, there should be two witnesses. And once he says talaq, as the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 228, that after the divorce is given, there should be an idda period of three menstrual cycle, or three months. So once the divorce is pronounced, the idda is a waiting period. I call it the prelims, it's interim period, where for three months, the husband and wife, they live in the same condition, but they do not have relationship. It is like a prelims or a trial, that can they be without each other? You know, you realize after two weeks, so, oh, you know, I was a fool, simply I said divorce, it was such a small matter that, you know, she's not ironing my clothes properly, and now I'm a bigger problem. So maybe they can again do ruju. They can again conciliate with one another. So there is a waiting period of three months. And in these three months, if the husband and wife reconcile, if they do ruju, then that means they yet continue to be husband and wife. If after three menstrual periods have passed away, and yet if they insist that they want to part, they can part in an equitable terms. They should not do much linking with each other should not try and blame each other, to, should not wash their dirty linen in public. Amicably, with respect, they should part. And the Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 229, that the husband should not take back the gifts which he is given. It's preferable that he gives it to her. And if they part, suppose after two years, the husband realizes that I made a mistake, then again he can marry the same lady. The Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 232, that do not prevent the woman from marrying their former husbands. That means people have misconceptions that once you get divorced, that's not possible to marry again. And they start saying, okay, we can do halala. You know halala? Halala means trying to get someone to marry the wife. 
so that she becomes legitimate. This is totally not permitted in Islam. In Islamic principle, if you read the Quran, the same man and woman can get married even after first divorce has been given, after the iddah is complete, but they should remarry with a new nikah and a new mahar. Again, if they remarry and something wrong takes place, again the same procedure, have consultation with husband and wife, appoint arbiter, you know, then give divorce, have two witnesses, then part. Again, if they want to reconcile, maybe after two years, again they can reconcile, but new nikah, new mahar. Again, if they have a problem, again they can part, but at this moment, it is the last. Quran says in Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse number 229, that divorce is only permissible twice. The third time, it is irrevocable. It means the first two divorces you give can be revocable, but the third divorce is irrevocable. It cannot be undone. Unless the wife marries another man and consummates the marriage. So now people have come up with this concept of halala, that fine, if I've given divorce, talak, 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 in one shot, and then I repent, so he lets his wife sleep with another man, and then after one night, then they give divorce, and they marry and consummate the marriage, then after one night, they give the divorce, and again, he marries. This is totally haram. It's totally haram. Islam prohibits it. You cannot do this. You cannot plan it. What it says, that if the husband and wife marry, and again they divorce, again they marry, this marriage is not gudda guddi ka khel. It's not, you know, a doll marriage where you're marrying, you know, two dolls together and then break it and again want to reconcile, again want to break it. So if you give divorce thrice, it is final irrevocable. I can remember young days, my mother used to say that bhaar jayenge to dal ateka bhaam malum padega, dal ateka. I used to wonder what is dal ateka. It is dal and atta. When you go out, you'll come to know the price of doll and flour. When I was a kid, I said, what dal and dal ateka? Maybe it's the idiom, you know, dal ateka, dal ateka. Then I came to know what she meant was dal and atta. When you go in the market, you will come to know what is the price of doll and flower. So it's not a gudda guddi ka kale, so now, okay, now enough. Enough of marrying and reconciliation, marrying and reconciliation, finish. Now you marry somebody else. And then, if she marries another husband, that lady, and then she realizes I was scribbling. My first husband used to give me five hours a day. This new husband does not even give me two hours a day. The first one is better. So if she marries a new husband, and then they realize this marriage is not working well. And then if the divorce takes place in a normal procedure, same procedure, which the consultation, appoint an arbiter, husband, wife, side, try and solve the problem. If it's not solved, then give a divorce, wait for three monthly cycles, three monthly periods, then part. And then she can marry the first former husband who has given her divorce ties. So this talaq hasan is a talaq which is described in the Quran, the Sahih Hadith. The other two, talaq e bidah is an innovation and talaq e hasan also. The best is talaq e hasan, which I have described, which is on the basis of Quran and Sunnah. Hope that answers the question. This was the last question of this session on better half or better half. Inshallah, we'll meet next time. Wa akhir da'wana, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen.